I've been looking forward to launching my hot air balloon. Hopefully we'll have time to play a couple of games and uh, talk a little bit about how animals are adapted to the places where they live. That's exactly right. Let's give him a hand. That's awesome. John, you're awesome. Can you put another paw up there next to the pole there, Paul? Yeah. You probably could put your feet up there too. Over there, I will be making magical airplanes that fly, even though they don't exactly look like they will, but they do. I just made this airplane and I'm getting ready to launch it. And then we made a solution of glue and water, and when we put them together, the borax bonds the particles and the glue together. So what color do you want to make? That's going to that's gonna turn turquoise, actually. Do you want turquoise? It's, you see how you see how it's bonding together? What you doing? Making bubbles. Are they moving at the same speed or are they moving at different speeds? Different speeds, they're taking steps. Well what if I changed it to this? The entire time they're actually moving at the same speed, even on this. But the lines distract you. We're taking pictures, and um, we're taking like another picture that goes with it, and um, we're putting them either on sticks, and then letting the kids color them. It's a vase, and then flowers, and when you spin it fast like that, it looks like a flowers in a vase. So this is the science fair section of this, uh, science night, and we have like projects from a four, fifth, and sixth, and seventh grade. I tested uh, the accuracy of eyewitness testimonies, and I learned that most of the time they are valid. I chose a selection of pictures, and I had each person look at them for 15 seconds, and then I gave them a test after three minutes. And then 24 hours later, I gave them another test, and then I uh, tallied up their answers to see how well they did. So the project turned out differently than I expected. Um, I thought that the cold water would affect it a lot more, but it turned out that the hot water affected it more than the cold water. When it was fully inflated and it was ready, it fly on its own. So what it did was it lifted up, and so it went over two houses and I landed in uh, my neighbor's tree. What I did is I made my own roller coaster. And so I, my investigative question is, how much high is needed for the initial drop in order for the marble to run through the, a loop of a fixed size? Well, I took cabbage juice and I put different household items, items in there. I learned that um, acidic liquids will make it turn red, but I took three dogs and I, for each dog I did paw 20 times for them and I t totaled up how many times like they did right paw and their, how many times they did left paw and I depended on that. Like my dog Penny is ambidextrous. My farthest by my aluminum bat was 179.4 feet and by my wood bat it was 149.5 feet. And the reason that I think my aluminum bat hit farther is because on the sweet spot, there's a little air compressor inside the bat. It's blue because the molecules in the atmosphere act like a prism. They slow down the light and they bend it into different colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. 
This is my first year at Benation Lim, and it's actually my first year of also doing a science fair project. Um, the students went above and beyond any of my expectations. When they brought in their science fair projects, um, the excitement that they had about them, uh, the details they went into, and then seeing that it was all student-led just made them that much uh, better. My favorite part was when building this board, like having confidence that I had finished it and that I had finished my first science project. 